Here's another practice problem. We are going to be balancing the equation here. Now, this example is more advanced than the previous ones, but it represents a really common type of question where we have one compound here that is both getting oxidized and reduced at the same time. We'll talk more about that later. But the point is, if you work through this problem with me, you'll be well on your way to being a redox balancing ninja. Even though this problem is more advanced, we're still just going to use the steps that we always use. We'll start out by determining the oxidation numbers of elements and looking at the oxidation number changes. Then we'll write half reactions for the oxidation and reduction. We'll balance each of these for atoms and charge. And finally, we'll put those half reactions together, making sure that the number of electrons is equal in both. Let's determine some oxidation numbers. Br2 here is an element by itself. It's not combined with any other elements, so it has an oxidation number of zero. Now over on this side of the equation, Br combines with oxygen to make a polyatomic ion with a charge of one minus. Now in compounds with other elements, Br usually has an oxidation number of minus one because it's one of the halogens, but it's going to have an oxidation number that is positive with oxygen. Here it is with oxygen. So we'll have to figure out its oxidation number. Now oxygen here usually has an oxidation number of minus two. We have three oxygens in this compound. So I'm gonna do minus two times three is gonna give me a total of minus six for oxygen. Now whatever Br's oxidation number is has to add together with minus six to make minus one because that's the charge of this polyatomic ion. So Br's oxidation number is going to be plus five because plus five minus six gives me minus one. So plus five for Br here. And then there's another Br on this side of the equation, Br1 minus, which is a monatomic ion it's an ion made of just one atom, and its oxidation number is the same as its ion charge. So oxidation number of minus one for Br1 minus. So what's being oxidized and what's being reduced? Well, Br2 bromine here, it's our only choice. So it's gotta be both oxidized and reduced. In a minute, I'll talk about how that's possible, but first, let's just look at these numbers, okay? So we got Br2 over here, and it's zero. And then here, it's Br plus five in this compound. Okay, so for this, its oxidation number is going up, which means that it is undergoing oxidation from here to here. Okay, so bromine is oxidized when it becomes BrO31 minus. But then over here, bromine also turns into Br minus, a negative ion, and in this case, it is reduced because its oxidation number goes from zero down to negative one. When oxidation number decreases, that's an example of reduction. Okay, so bromine here, how can it be both oxidized and reduced? Well, think about it this way. In a chemical reaction, there'd be a whole bunch of bromine atoms. Some of them would be oxidized and some of them would be reduced, all right? It's not like every single one of them is being both oxidized and reduced. Some atoms are oxidized and other bromine atoms are reduced. Even in this equation right here, we have Br2 on this side, which means that there are two bromine atoms. Then over here, one of those is oxidized and another is reduced. So that's one way you can think about it. We have two, one of them is oxidized, one of them is reduced. Okay, for writing half reactions, for balancing the equations, it's gonna be a little bit different, but if you follow the rules that we've done before, it should still make sense. So let's see how to do this. Okay, let's write some half reactions. First, the half reaction for oxidation. Okay, so we start out with Br2, then we got our arrow, and then over here is a compound where bromine is getting oxidized. So we're gonna have Br O3, one minus. This is the oxidation half reaction. Now for the reduction half reaction, we start out with Br2, and that becomes Br1 minus, over here. Now we've got to balance each one of these for atoms and charge. Okay, let's do some balancing. First, we'll make a little chart that shows how many atoms of each type we have on the two sides of the equation. Okay, so I got bromine and oxygen here that I'm dealing with. So I got Br and then I got O on both sides. Over here, I have two Brs 
I have no oxygens at all, I got zero. And then over here, I have uh, one Br, I have O3, so I got three oxygens. The first thing I wanna do is balance atoms other than oxygen and hydrogen. So for here, that's gonna be bromine. Okay, I got two on this side, got one on this side. Balancing this is pretty easy. I just stick a two in front of this. Now I'm gonna multiply this whole thing by two, which is gonna give me two bromines, but then it's also gonna give me two times three, which is gonna be six oxygens. Okay, so now the bromines are balanced. The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to uh, balance the oxygens and then balance the hydrogens. I'll add H2O to balance the oxygens. Let's look at that situation here. I have six oxygens over here. I have zero oxygens here. Okay, so I'm gonna be adding water, H2O, to this side to supply me with some oxygens. How many of these do I want? Well, each H2O has one oxygen atom in it, okay? So I need six more oxygen atoms on this side so they can balance out the ones over here. So I'm gonna put a six in front of this here, okay? And now that is going to give me six oxygens, but it's also gonna give me some new hydrogens. Okay, so let me add that to the chart. Now, how many hydrogens do I have? I have six times two hydrogens on this side, which is 12. I got zero, I got no hydrogens over here right now. So I'm gonna use these rules and add H plus on this side to balance out the hydrogens here. I have 12 hydrogens here, so I'm gonna add 12 H plus. And just remember, we're balancing this in acidic solution. H pluses make things more acid, so we're just adding these H pluses. Whenever you're told to balance something in acidic solution, it just means that you're gonna be adding H pluses to balance hydrogen, because H pluses make things more acidic. Okay, anyway, I add these 12 H pluses and now I got 12 hydrogens on this side. Two bromines, six oxygens, 12 hydrogens. This balances for atoms. Now it's time to balance the charges, okay? So have this line here to divide the equation into two parts. Over here on the left, I don't have anything that's charged. So I have a charge of zero here, okay. Over here, I've got BrO3 with a one minus charge, and I have two of them, okay? So I'm gonna have minus two there. And then over here, I have 12 H pluses. Each one of those has a one plus charge, so I have a plus 12 equals plus 10 of charge. Zero here, plus 10, I want them to balance, so I'm gonna add 10 electrons to this side, plus 10 E minus, each one of these has a charge of one minus, so I have plus 10, minus 10 from the electrons gives me zero. Zero here, zero here, they balance out. Now let's do the same thing with the balancing for the reduction half reaction. All right, let's balance this. Okay, first for atoms other than oxygen and hydrogen, all I got here is bromine, okay? So I have two bromines on this side, one bromine here. I don't even need to make a chart for this. I'm just gonna stick a two in front of that. Now, if I had other elements, I'd add H2O and the H+, but I don't even have to worry about that because I just have bromine, okay? So now we can move right on to uh, add electrons to balance the charges. Let's take a look at the charges on both sides. Okay, I have a zero right here because there's nothing that's charged on this side. And then I have two Br1 minuses. So I've got minus two on this side, okay? In order to balance these, I'm gonna to have to add some electrons on this side to lower, lower the charge. So I'm gonna add two E minus. That's gonna give me two negative charge. So zero minus two equals minus two. Now both charges are the same on the two sides. So we've balanced both the oxidation and reduction half reactions. We're now gonna start putting them together. To do that, we gotta make sure that they both have the same number of electrons, and right now they don't. We've got 10 electrons up here in the oxidation half reaction and only two electrons here in the reduction half reaction. Let's do some multiplication to make the number of electrons equal. Since I got 10 here and I got two here, I'm gonna multiply this reaction by five, okay? So we'll do that. Now I'm gonna have five times two, 10 electrons, perfect. Now they match, 
Then I distribute this five across. So I have plus five times BR2, five BR2. Then I got my arrow, five times two, 10 BR minus. So this is my new reduction reaction. And now I have the same number of electrons in both of these reactions and I can pull them, stick them together. Let's add these half reactions. We'll combine everything on this side of the arrow to start with. So we got six H2O plus Br2 plus 10 E minus plus five Br2. Now we add the arrow, there's the arrow. Now we'll combine everything on this side of the arrow. So we have two Br O3 one minus plus 12 H plus plus 10 E minus plus down here, 10 Br one minus. Now, we're supposed to cancel out stuff that appears on both sides of the arrow. And in redox problems like this, we tend to find electrons on both sides of the arrow. 10 electrons here, 10 electrons here. Let's cancel them out. There's actually some more manipulation that we can do here as well though. Check this out. I have Br2 here, and then I have five Br2 here. So I wanna take these two and add them together. I have one here, and five here, so that's gonna give me six total. Take a look at what this equation is once we, uh, once we rearrange it. I get rid of the electrons, as you'll see, and then I take this and this and combine them together to make six Br2. So this is our, our rewritten equation here. Now we're not quite done, because take a look at the numbers. Take a look at the coefficients in this equation. Imagine that this is a math equation and this is math class. Your teacher might look at this and say that you have one more step to do. And what would that be? Well, it would be to reduce this more. Every single one of these numbers is divisible by two, right? We got six, six, two, 12, and 10. So we can put this equation in a more reduced form by dividing each one of the coefficients by two, just like we're simplifying a, a mathematical equation. And this is what we'll get when we divide everything by two. Six divided by two gives us three and three. Two divided by two gives us one. Then we have 12 becomes six and 10 becomes five. So this equation here in red is our most reduced, our most simplified version of the equation. So this is the one that we'd wanna put on a test or on a quiz, because this is a most correct final answer. Now, if you're like me, you probably think that this final check is just such a waste of time, right? It's a kind of nitpicky thing that your teacher would make you do, but trust me, it's actually worthwhile here. When I'm trying to balance these, I make mistakes all the time, and I don't even realize that I've made a mistake until the final check, when things don't balance, and then I have to go back and you know rearrange stuff earlier on. So just trust me. Balancing these equations is hard enough that even if you're paying close attention, it's really easy to just make a small slip up and then you carry that slip up through the whole rest of the equation. So trust me, it makes sense to do this final check and it only takes a couple seconds. Okay, so let's first do the check for the atoms. Okay, on both sides, we have hydrogen, oxygen, and bromine. Okay, so hydrogen, on this side we have two, I'm sorry, three times two. Okay, so we got six hydrogens. Then for oxygens we have three times one, so I got three of these. Bromines, I have three times two, so I got six of those. Hydrogens on this side, I have six right here. Oxygens, O3, so I got three of those. And bromines, I have one here plus five over here, so that gives me six. Six, three, six. The atoms all balance. Now let's look at the charges. Okay, on this side, I have nothing that's charged, so I have a total charge of zero. Over here, I have one negative charge there, minus one. 
I've got six right there, six H pluses, so that's gonna be plus six. And then here I have five Br1 minuses, so that's gonna be minus five. Minus one, plus six, minus five, equals zero. The charges balance to atoms balance, charges balance, we know we did it correctly. So, just to go back to what we talked about at the very beginning, Br, bromine, is being both oxidized and reduced here. But if you just take that into account when you're writing the half reactions, and then you work through the rest of the problem just like usual, it's not a big deal. You might have to combine some of these BRs at that last step when you add the two equations together, but other than that, it's a fairly standard problem. Don't freak out if you get this type of problem where the same thing is both oxidized and reduced. Okay, cool, and as I said at the beginning, if you can do this kind of problem, you are well on your way to being a redox balancing ninja.